So the big fight this past weekend was Anthony Joshua's return to the ring against Jermaine Franklin. Joshua got the win in what was quite a cautious performance. Now I think there are a few things to take into account when looking at this performance. Firstly, there's the enormous pressure on Joshua's shoulders going into this fight. Franklin isn't a top name or a top level operator, but he proved against Dylan White and against Joshua that he can handle himself and is a tricky opponent. Considering the stakes and the pressure of coming off of back-to-back -back losses, this was a must win for Joshua. It definitely wasn't a great performance, but he did get the win. I think the next couple of fights that Joshua is going to take are going to be confidence builders before he steps in with the big boys. All in all, I don't think you can really judge Joshua too harshly good or bad on this performance. He's got the win and built a little bit of momentum for his comeback. Due to his popularity and status, every AJ fight is critiqued under a microscope and he has had back-to-back -back losses, but for the amount of fights he's had in that heavyweight division, he has a fantastic resume. I think a cautious performance, albeit underwhelming, is understandable. Coming off of back-to-back -back losses, he needed the win and he got it, so let's judge him on his next couple of fights and moving on to the featherweight division the skillful southpaw Rebasi ramirez beat the very tough eyes at dog bay both of these fighters are excellent operators but ramirez looks like an excellent addition to a stacked featherweight division and after this performance now holds a wbo featherweight world title and we also saw the announcement of the rematch between maurizio lara and lee wood now i wasn't really expecting this one but respect to lee wood for getting in there after taking such a brutal knockout lara does look like the real deal and he's a huge puncher but wood's got power of his own in plenty of heart so i'm intrigued for this rematch and i'm also excited to see mick conlon get his second shot at a world title he'll face the very tough luis alberto lopez for the ibf belt conlon is a quality operator who in my opinion is destined to win a world title and i think he'll be a quality addition to the champions at featherweight i also wanted to look ahead to the javante davis ryan garcia fight which is one that i'm really excited for now looking at this one, I can't help but think about the vulnerability that Garcia has shown in prior fights to southpaw left hands. Davis has proven time and time again that he has probably the most dangerous left hand in boxing. But not only this, he's also one of the most explosive finishers in the sport and has a deadly right hand too. But every time Garcia has been hit with that shot, he gets up and he himself is a dangerous fighter, especially with his speed and his sharp left hook. This really is an intriguing fight and it's so good to see two young undefeated superstars stepping into the ring against each other. So credit to both fighters for getting this one made. And finally, two fighters I know extremely well stepped back into the ring recently. Undefeated super lightweight Harlem Eubank improved his record to 17 0 with another dominant performance. I know from first hand experience, having sparred plenty of rounds with Harlem, that he's the real deal and one of the most improved fighters in the UK. Make sure you keep an eye on Harlem because he's definitely moving on to big things. And Harlem stablemate Abbas Baral scored a dominant second round TKO on the card. I've also sparred plenty of rounds with Abbas and trust me when I say this, he's the real deal. He's one of the strongest people I've been in the ring with and he has the amateur pedigree to back it up. This former amateur European champion and world bronze medalist is going to go on to achieve big things as a pro. 